going on? Whew. That head shake, man. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, we got the one we want here, guys. Okay, we have returned to the Chesapeake Bay. It's been over a year. I like fishing this place because it'll it'll be brutally humbling out here. This is not like some miracle place where fish just jump on your lines. But um, it's definitely special at the same time. So we're going to try a bunch of different things. Uh, we can focus on the crab eaters, which are big black drum and sheep's head. I kind of want to get a big black drum for the spring. I haven't caught one yet this year. And flounder to my North Carolina viewers. Uh, <laughs> the trips to Virginia and South Carolina are now probably, uh, they're probably something that a lot of heavy duty flounder guys are thinking about. It is what it is. We can talk about that later in the video. But uh, let's get started. We've got a beautiful day of weather. I looked at the weather here and I was like, you know what? I'm going for it. So let's give this a try. I'm really, I'm pumped, man. I'm so pumped. I know even if I don't land something giant today, I'm probably going to have at least one hookup that's going to be my jaw dropper. So pumped. I can't even finish my sentences right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have to give a wonderful thank you to Jeff Anderson of One Fish, Two Fish. He's got me back out here to the land of the giants. Bridge Monsters. Bridge Monsters. If you haven't checked out his channel, maybe you're familiar with him. Uh, I'll put a link in the video's description. He does YouTube filming full time in Virginia, Outer Banks, etc. Traveling man too. <laughs> but uh <laughs> traveling salesman but anyway right. he's on the uh, old town predator uh we're gonna just pop around and uh i'm i'm ready just to see what bites i'm kind of excited why is you fishing as a tourist right i'm not a local to this bridge right so how does a local i'm uh, sorry how does so how does a tourist go here to catch fish right well obviously one of the the big forages here are these guys blue crabs you'll catch uh black drum and sheep's head on these guys and you can use fiddler crabs too Oh, we've got a few in here. We could probably jig some flounder on this bridge. That's kind of what I want to do today. We're going to definitely give flounder a few hour effort. And then tomorrow, maybe we'll try something different in a different area. But flounder, this blue crab, he's going to get the cut. I'm going to quarter them, right? Got a decent amount of tide still moving through this area so we're in no rush we're going to alternate between dropping crabs on the pilings and jigging for flounder so like right now that looks great for flounder i could probably maybe even pick one or two in this area so i'm going to just slowly methodically work my way around this stuff no rush no rush i'm gonna start with ounce and a half just to, to see and if i got if i can go lighter i will Same. Same Z's. One on. Bridge monster. I know what that is. Got bridge monster. Where you going, buddy? Where you going? We got no nah, blue crab. Wherever you're going, don't go there. Please don't go there. Okay, good, good, good. Let's go around this piling. Maybe I got a shot at you. All right, good, good, good. A lot easier on slack tide, I'll tell you that. That head shake, man. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Cool. Yeah. That's it. What's not to love about this? Cool. So, I could just kind of hold on to him. We're gonna drag him out a little bit, and we should be good here. It's on a quarter blue crab. This is a big fish. Okay, I 
think I'm out of the danger zone. It's a new route I'm trying out. Jigging World Black Widow. I think these guys use these for AJs, honestly. Sometimes you fight these guys on slack, it's a little less insane. See, to me, I like the black drum sometimes. I get a lot of reds where I'm from. Black drum are a little more of a novelty. All right, we're good here. Let's get them up. He's big either way. I think it's a black drum. <sighs> Definitely gonna need this. Did you mark anything? No, I just dropped. He hit pretty quick. Kind of the minute I dropped on it. Maybe it's a black drum though, we'll find out. I like to, my, my uh, giant, yeah buddy, black drum. Black drum, for, for the bridge monster. Uh, yeah, we got the one we want here, guys. Oh guys, check it out. It's, a, it's a, basically a buffalo. That's what I come here for. These guys are kind of underrated. I mean, I love the big reds, but these guys really need to get some love too. You hear that? Ooh, it's a bass drum. Gosh, that's a 30, 40 pound fish, maybe 50. Uh oh, he's gonna be interesting to get in the kayak, I know that. Don't put too many giant fish in this, Hobie, this new Hobie Outback. And put some pretty big reds in it. But the, these black drum are going to be intense. So here we go. It's an ounce and a half bottom sweeper. Got a little bit of current there. Oh my god. Oh, that's awesome. That's the fish, man. It's a bridge monster. <laughs> That's what I came for, man. Oh man, I love it. <laughs> I don't catch a whole lot of these, so they're fun, man. What a fun fish. Oh man. How old is this fish? He's old. He's a real old one. So try to take the best care you can of them. And um, let's see. Sometimes the plunge works better than the swishy swishy. Because it gets some air going into them. Uh oh. Sometimes they take a second to get going too though. Oh yeah, he's good. You hear that? Gotta like orient him properly. As soon as he's oriented, good. Gosh, look at that fish, guys. Look at that one. No, things are bad when you're crab towels. But you got to clean yourself off here, you know? Man, I put the screws to that fish. It's scary in some current to try to do that. Don't recommend going too heavy on any big fish. It gets kind of 
sketchy quick and some current uh mike over at jigging world gave me a couple rods this spring it's like try them for whatever i was like i was like i don't know i don't do well i guess i figured out something it's good for it's probably great for aj's though that's what i was thinking all right let's see if we can land another one i think you could do a one more maybe two more and then give the arms a break you know you're playing probabilities obviously but if a fish is going somewhere where there's no structure oh just let him pull and take you so you can you know set up for the long game i mean that's an important thing when it comes to any large fish on structures from sheep's head and toe tug uh, black drum red drum all this fish you know if you ever get that window of opportunity where a big fish takes you away from structure just take advantage of it that's all i gotta say still sharp want to always check that if it's not sharp then you got to put it away for the day go home and sharpen it unless it's you know that messed up that's tight i think the plan is really to get a couple of these big guys and then we'll go look for flounder not going to leave big fish necessarily right away but get started on them and then see what the day develops into Dropped them, damn. I mean, it could have been a sheep's head, but I don't think that was. All right, we can switch it off. I don't think we have a, as much um, current now. We can go to lighter, lighter setups and get more bites, you know? Yeah, we could definitely fish lighter now. I like to go as light as possible and just get more bites doing it that way. Well, it's a sheep set, I think. I was on a fiddler crab. I just decided to try something different here. I think I'm gonna go with that's probably a sheep's head. Yeah, it is. Just really wanted to see what I would get on a fiddler crab. And that's not a bad one. This particular bridge holds Probably, in my opinion, the largest in the world. He ate a, I put a fiddler crab on. I was kind of just curious. I also went a little lighter on my jig. I went from a oh, ounce and a half to one ounce because current's pretty mild right now. So I don't need such heavy weights to get down there. On the way over, I got a Butterfinger shake. Although the new Butterfinger, it's just not as good as the old one. I'm okay with sheep. Oh, big sheep, yeah. Man, that's gonna be one of my biggest for the year. I thought we had black drum down there. Oh, oh. It's a, a mondo. I'll take a quick little peek. Not at the scales, but just the measurement of this guy. Oh, he's 24. I thought he was going to be bigger than that. But he's got a much bigger girth than my, my NC ones, honestly. You know what I'm saying? What a fish. These things are pretty cool. Really recommend making that a, a target if you don't fish for them much. Uh, I'm cruising now, just looking for some flounder bottom. Uh, I want to jig on, I definitely want to put a couple flounder in the cooler. Right now, if you're not a in the know, North Carolina's flounder season is like 14 day. I quote me, you know, I'm, I might be, it might be 14 or 15, whatever. I think it's like you're going to be allowed to keep 54 fish if you add it all up. And they put that into a two week condensed period. I don't know. Somebody could explain it. Why would you want to have anglers pressuring a stock for two weeks? versus having one fish a day for like two months. That to me makes a lot more sense. Uh, especially if you're a bait fisherman, you know, you're going out with bait, you'll gut hook these fish, etc. I would think you would eventually. 
so you're gonna have a higher discard mortality too but you know I, I don't know explain it in the comment section if you know this stuff don't be surprised Virginia and South Carolina anglers don't be surprised to see a influx of new people for uh for flounder I'm happy with that black drum though didn't get one this spring in the Cape Fear River so getting one on the Chesapeake Bay is just as good three quarter ounce trocar eagle claw trocar bucktail got some nice structure here let's see if we get any bites all right well we found some good structure um and they can get a flounder on it was hoping to get a flatty on it i think they would be here but you know i'm not a local so i don't know you know a particular what makes for a good structure here In my experience this would hold just maybe one or two good fish that's probably it all right, I put, spent an hour playing Dora the Explorer, trying to find a couple things for my own. Just some oyster toadfish, uh, nothing really crazy. So back to the bridge it is. So wind's starting to kick up now, so I'm making a making an executive decision. Kind of stick to the area where I caught a couple this morning. Uh, should be flounder there too, so that's what I'm thinking. Just those two sheeps and a black drum. I didn't focus on the sheeps that too much. Tried for these flounder, no dice. Tried a couple different spots for the flounders. No, it didn't work out. Check the video's description for links for the gear we used. Thanks to Jeff for taking me out. Um, you can check out his channel. I don't know if he put out a video today. I think he got his sheep set tomorrow. Let's see, I'm thinking, what to do tomorrow? Really want to get the flounders. Your cobia, obviously, but um, like now is the time to look for cobia, but it's, it's too bumpy for a kayak. You know what I'm saying? Because early in the morning they're not up high very often I maybe mean, here and there they can be i'm guessing but from what i've always heard like 9 a.m till 2 or 3 p.m is really the time definitely put more texture to it coming uh having that easterly um little touch to it so that's what i got um gonna organize the kayak and uh yeah beach it can't complain though i had a good time uh i love that black drum it's uh you know that donkey goes that donkey can pull, so I always enjoy that. So let me get the kayak back on the beach and uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. So, um, flounder, gotta get the flounders.